to the channel. Today is a little different. Today I'm going to be replacing a wheel bearing on this 2005 Lincoln Aviator. Basically a souped up Ford Explorer. Now, the reason I'm doing it is it's a family car and it just needs to be done. And I'm going to get into uh, how much it costs a shop to do it in a minute. But first I got to get this thing in the air and I'm going to put a jack stand under it. All right, let me show you what I got here. So whenever I'm taking a left turn at a high rate of speed, we, we're hearing this groaning and almost like a grinding sound. Not very loud grinding, but definite, definite noise. So we went to our local Les Schwab, it's just down the road here, and they got it up in the air and they were able to shake the wheel back and forth, which I should have done just now to check it myself. But moving it up and down here, I can feel just the tiniest of play in there. like a bad bearing. Not as much play on this side, but definite 12 and 6 o'clock play. So, but they said, yeah, definitely a wheel bearing. So, which is good because I thought it was like a tie rod end or a CV axle or something way farther in the vehicle, but they wanted over $500 to replace it. Now at my local AutoZone, it was 177 bucks. On Amazon, it was $45. So if I can do it myself, save about $500 here. So. I thought it'd be worth showing you guys. So these are 14 millimeter bolts for the caliper. So guys, this is pretty much why I do YouTube videos in the first place. Back in the day, I had a, when I was delivering pizzas out of high school, I had a really bad Toyota pickup truck. And so constantly having to go to Les Schwab or some other repair shop to get parts replaced, brakes, tie rod, suspension, tie, you know, you, you name it, I had to get it replaced. Eventually, I got tired of paying all their labor prices and expensive stuff. I just wanted to do it myself. I wanted to learn how I could do it myself and save a buck in the process. And figured if I could film it, maybe someone else could save some money as well. So this is a perfect example of why I do what I do. I'm not used to thinking and working at the same time. Hang this caliper up here. Okay. So now I gotta get the bracket off. And that's on the back side here. It's a 21. Okay, the rotor should just come off. Yep. So it turns out, I should have recognized it ahead of time, but these are all metric sockets. And so I didn't have the right socket for this axle nut. Turns out it's a 30 millimeter. Okay, so since the axle nut is free, this axle should be okay to just push that way. Now I got a big hammer here. The punch I had was too big and not enough force. So I'm just gonna beat on it. All right, well this took a lot longer than I thought it would. These three bolts that are in a triangle pattern here, here, and one on the other side were just seized in there almost. I had to use a breaker bar and do a quarter turn until the socket wouldn't fit on there anymore. Then I had to go to this 15 millimeter combination wrench. So kind of fought me every step of the way, but they're out. All right, change of plans. This is not one to come off no matter how hard I hit it with a hammer. So I got rented a slide hammer. Here we go. So it's out. Now I'm just taking a, a brush 
and getting in here and making sure the mating surface is cleaned up. There's some sort of gasket here from the factory. I'm having to remove that. The new part didn't come with a gasket, so I think it'll be okay. So I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, but right here is where this wire loom will clip into. So you have to have the wire oriented in a certain way. And that pressed right on guys, no fuss or anything, just went on easy. All right, so these three bolts are tightened down. Now we're just threading this ABS line through. So the ABS line is all connected and I put the rotor back on as well as the caliper bracket on with the 21 millimeter bolts on the back because I have to put on the axle nut now. And if I just tried to turn it it's by itself, the axle will just spin with it and you won't be able to tighten it. So if you're by yourself, I've seen people like use a chain to keep this uh, tight, but I also heard someone suggest that you can just take a screwdriver, stick it in the rotor and brace it against the bracket and then be able to tighten it down. Proper torque spec from online from what I've seen is 183 foot pounds. Uh, my torque wrench only goes up to 150. So I'm just gonna have to make do with my impact here. So I ended up using a breaker bar worked actually better than the impact it gave me more leverage so that's on and this only goes up to 150 so i'll just tighten this to 150 and then go a little bit past with the breaker bar i know that's the wrong way to do it but that's what i got use a c-clamp to compress those pistons in just a little bit to get them past the brake pads but it's on so you're probably wondering cody did that fix the problem it sure did we're not hearing any annoying bearing noise whenever we take a left turn sounds super smooth going down the road it's fixed so $45 part fixed the problem and I don't have to pay someone f over $500 to do the job that I could have done in a day. So let me show you the bearing here. It's kind of interesting. You can hear definite metal on metal. So guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope the video was helpful to anyone who wants to do this job themselves and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.